Oh yeah. What's happening, everybody? I am clearly in the home office, which means there could be all kinds of fun noises like dogs and kids and fun stuff like that. So give it a few minutes for uh, people to make their way in. It's good to see everybody there. I see uh, Dennis. I see Megan is here. She's already in the chat room, chatting it up like she does. Oh man, I'm so excited. You guys, the shop is, it's so fun right now. I'm having such a good time making this version two of the shop and really refining the space. It's, it's going to be fantastic. So we're going to have to do a shop tour here pretty soon. But if you don't follow me on Instagram, um, that's where I've been doing some stories, just kind of giving you a little bit of a preview of it. Uh, take a look there. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Lots of goings on. <clears throat> Oh, Abby, quiet. All right. So I am ready to roll here. I'm all queued up. Uh, just give it a couple more seconds. Maybe I should close that door. Maybe not. I don't know. Dougie is in the way as a doorstop. Hey, Abby. <clears throat> Can you just chill? Can you chill, please? So we're doing a little movie night outside in the driveway and she can't be out there. So she's really, really mad about it. Understandably so. Greetings from New Jersey. Hey, you know what I had? Speaking of Jersey, my mom came back from Jersey with two tomato pies. Um, partially cooked, refrigerated, and ready to be you know, finished cooked. Had one of those for dinner tonight. I mean, it's not quite the same as being there, but darn good. Real good. <clears throat> Okay, I think we're going to get started. Uh, are we doing Patreon chat on Monday? Yes, yeah, this is the last Monday of the month. So stay tuned to the master uh, feed on there. Well, it's the main feed. I'll just segment it out into that group of people, and I'll put the, the link in there for you. Okay, let's get started. So please ignore my dog in the background. Uh, today we are going to do a little watch party of one of the episodes from Megan's upcoming Boarded bookcase build. Uh, Megan Fitzpatrick is a fantastic woodworker. Uh, I've known her for quite a, a long time now. Um, she's with Lost Art Press now over there with Chris Schwarz and just does amazing work. Uh, great writer and a wonderful woodworker. This particular course, as I watched it, maybe even more so than the last one, this one feels so beginner friendly. There's a certain something being done in the explanations and the level of detail and the time she's taking to show the techniques that I think this is going to be uh, exceptionally appropriate for beginners. So highly, highly recommend that. Uh, lo lots of great explanations. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Um, so this is a quick preview. We're going to watch a full episode. I think we're doing the shelves. Yeah, we're doing shelves and grooves on this one. And uh, this is your opportunity to take a look, decide if this is a course you want to get into. Now's the time to do it because tomorrow the price goes up to full price. Right now, you can get a special pre-order price. So very important that you jump on that if that's what you're into. Thanks, bud. <clears throat> if you think it looks good, and I think you will. So we'll watch this together. Um, Megan is already in the chat there. So if you have questions, feel free uh, to ask those questions and I'll answer whatever I can. If it's a question for me, I'll be there in a chat with you. This is a 25 minute video on shelves and grooves. So that's your time commitment here. If you've got places to be, let's watch a video together. So all my datas are cut. Let's just take a closer look at them. Unfold our work so that my marriage marks are matching at the front. I don't know why I do that at this point. I just do. And oh good, they line up. That's important. If you look at your datos and suspect that they're a little bit out of square, it may or may not be an issue. So I have a tiny little square here that I can use if it becomes an issue to check things, but I'm not going to use this unless I have to. If I need to, I can go in and look at the side of the dado. So if there's a V this way, you can come in with a chisel flat to the side and take it out. If there's a V this way, it may or may not be an issue. We're going to assume it's not an issue until it is. So now I'm going to take my shelves. I'm going to do one at a time so I don't get confused. And just so you can see the marriage mark, I'm going to turn it around and work this way. Because again, the marriage mark is what keeps us going in the right direction. We'll start in order with my bottom shelf. 
this marriage mark tells me it's the bottom. It's got the two little doofletchies on it. It's pointing that way. It's on the front edge. So everything lines up right now. I will drop it in place and we'll find out if it fits. I'm pretty sure this one's loose on one side and tight on the other. As I said earlier, I want a press fit and that one's a little bit loose. I mean, it's still tight enough to hold it in place, so that's great. If it were too loose, and I might still do this just to get rid of that unsightly gap that no one will ever see except me, and I will point it out to everyone because we can't avoid doing that, I could stick a wedge in the bottom here and push it up to the top. So this one goes fully in. It's fully seated in its dado. Great. Move on to the next one. Got my marriage mark. It's the middle of the triangle. That tells me it's the middle shelf. It's on the front edge. It's pointing up. Front edge pointing up. I know I'm in the right direction. Let's see. Excellent. This one is too tight. And that's actually what I was going for on this one because I want to show you how to fix that. I can't get this to go into its dado at all. We are not going to adjust the size of the dado. We are going to plane the underside of the shelf until it fits. We're going to plane cross grain. It will never show. As I'm checking each of my shelves before moving on to the next one, I want to get this one to fit in its dado. Otherwise, I won't remember which one I need to come back and do later. That'll never work. I can't even remember to mark my baselines. I'll certainly not remember which shelf I need to fix. So I'm going to plane just down here out at the end of the board, and that'll allow me to fit it into its dado. And I'm going cross grain. I'll take my plane. I'll tilt it just a little bit to plane a slight angle. And I'll need to back up the work here so it doesn't slide all over the place on me. So I'm just going to flip this around since I'm right-handed. That way I'm planing down here in a way that feels more natural to me. I'm going to take a small chamfer off the back edge there because I don't want to blow out the back side as I come across. Let's see if that was enough to get it to fit into place. It probably isn't, but I do like to stop every couple of passes until I get really close because you just don't know. One stroke could make the difference between it fitting and being too loose. So now it's going in at the back, but not quite at the front. So I'm just going to take a few passes up here, and I should probably mark those so that I don't get turned around by the time I move down to where I'm planing. Just grab a pencil, and that tells me that's the end I still need to fit. This one's looking good. So just a pass or two back here, and I think it'll drop right in. Well, hopefully, hopefully it won't drop right in. Hopefully I'll be able to press it in. What that tells me is I didn't actually cut this dado perfectly straight. That's okay. You can see how we can fit it properly regardless of a small error. So you can see it's almost seating. I might be able to bop that in with a mallet. I'm going to try. Nope. Another pass or two and we'll be good to go. I would much rather have this problem than have it be too loose. This isn't actually a problem. This allows me to get a perfect fit by sneaking up on it. So now I've got it fit. Ideally, I should be able to lift this side up with that in place. So it's actually a little loose at the back, but it's nice and tight at the front. That's a good fit at the front. It's a good enough fit overall. So now we're ready to fit the last one. Find my marriage mark. Up oh, there it is, which tells me it goes this way. It's weird working backwards. Now this board is slightly cupped. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I'm able to rock it in there to the bottom. I'm able to rock it into the back, but it's sticking in the middle. And I'm almost certain it's because the board is slightly cupped. I'll bet I can bop it in place here Notice that I'm protecting my work. I don't want to actually hit it with this heavy lump hammer, but I need the lump hammer to provide enough force to try and seat this in the middle. That's pretty tight. I might just take one cross grain pass, uh, concentrating here in the center, just to take care of that. But this is pretty close. With the shelves all fit to this side of the shelving unit, we now need to fit the other ends to the other side, same as before.
You can probably see through the camera that this board actually twisted a little. So I can get the front edge in, I can get the back edge in, but you can see that it's not lining up with the dado. The dado is straight, the board is not. So I'll have to use a little more force to twist this one into place. And that's okay, that's how you can get away with using a slightly twisted board or a slightly cupped board. A tight dado can pull that out. The reason that one was so hard to get in was because of that twist. Again, I'm working against that twist as I push it into the tight dado, and now the twist is gone. With all of my shelves fit, now I can move on to cutting out the joinery for the top rail that will help keep it together and will also keep our backboards in place later. I don't need to do a full dry fit because I've dry fit each end and I know that it's gonna go together. Having them fit well enough to stay in place as I'm standing here talking is great. That'll make it easier when it comes time for assembly. But if yours are a little loose, don't fret about it. They're also gonna get nailed into place so this thing is not going anywhere. So up until now, we've been cutting dados. Now we're gonna cut a groove, and that is a trench that goes in the direction of the grain. And that's going up here at our top back edge on both pieces to accept the back rail. So this will just go in, it's the same length as the shelves, into a groove here. So I have left my original gauge set so that I can have the same baseline as I used for all of my dados, because we need this to be that same depth in order for it to fit. But I have a second one here because I need to inset that groove enough to accept the thickness of our backboards. And I should note that the shelves are cut to the width that will allow the thickness of this backboard as well. But you'll get all that in the cutting list and the drawings that come along with the video. So I've already planed up the front side of this because again, I don't wanna plane something after I've done the joinery, then the joinery won't be as tight as it ought to be. I have a marriage mark on it. It's on the face this time, pointing up in the direction it will go at assembly. I put it on the piece of tape because I've already planed this. I'm not going to be planning it again after I have the case together. I didn't have to worry about that on my shelves because it's on the front edge. I'll be able to plane that off after the thing is together. This, I'd have to probably sand or get in there with my plane and it would be awkward. So this is the better solution in this instance. So first, let's set a square to the width of the board. It should be four. Hey look, it is four. But I didn't want to trust that it was four. Much better just to measure the thing. I'll make a, a mark down here with my pencil. So that is how deep my stopped groove will be. It'll, it's called a stopped groove because the groove stops there. Now I need to know how far in to set it. It has to be the back edge of it far enough in that it can accept my backboards here. And we'll be talking more about these backboards later, but you'll notice there's already joinery cut on them. That's because they're from the home center. So I have set the second marking gauge to the exact thickness, plus a nat's posterior, to the thickness of my backboard. So this is the thickness of the backboard plus just a hair more. I'm gonna mark that as the back edge of my groove. Now I need to get the thickness of my backboard plus the back rail because that will give me the location of the second wall of the groove. I like this tight mark because it's micro adjustable. I can set it at the back for the gross adjustment and then with one hand uh, I can micro adjust the blade to get it set perfectly for both those thicknesses. And then that, I'll mark it in here, is the second wall of our groove. And I'm just gonna make my pencil line here at the back a little longer, just so I know where to stop. So now, I need to mark the baseline. And for that, I'm going to use my original gauge that is still set to the baseline of our dados. And that'll go on the end here. Now I just need to remove that waste. I don't really need to mark it this time. I know what the waste is and it's be hard to get confused now. Although I suppose you could take out that by mistake. That's what we need to remove. So let's do that. So at the back of my groove here, all I have is a pencil line. I wanna put a chisel right on that line. I could have knifed it into, I just want a positive stop. So I'm gonna go straight up and down with that 90 degrees and just bop a line there. I can't 
push too hard, if I hit it too hard, the bevel of the chisel can force it over your baseline, and I don't want to do that. It'll look sloppy, and I don't want it to look sloppy because this is up here at the top edge, and it will show. With that in mind, I am also going to just for a little insurance, since this is a chisel I have in my hand, I'm just going to go ahead and use that to make a little V cut here at my knife line, pop out that waist to give my saw something to register against. I do not have a tenon saw, so I'm going to use my dovetail saw, which is rip filed which is filed then to go with the grain. Because this saws on the push stroke, I can't really get all the way down to my baseline in the back at the same time as in the front. Maybe I could, but that would be too fussy. So I'm going to saw at an angle, trying not to cross over until I hit my baseline here, and then I'll finish the cut with a different tool. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and saw the back wall of my groove as well. This one is not going to show. That's why I'm not as worried about giving myself a trench against which to saw. That's really all I can do with the saw. You don't even have to use the saw. We could just do this all with the chisel. Continuing on, using the chisel for the rest of it, you'll see what I mean by that. So now I need to deepen this wall with a chisel. I need to be careful down here though, actually the whole way, because as I said, the grain is running in this direction. If I hit it here, it could also break it back beyond here because it wants to split the grain. This is a wedge and a wedge going with the grain can split it. We just need to be careful, which means we're gonna take small little bites and work down to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and deepen the baseline here with a V cut. And again, I was just using my hand. Now, because I have given a place for this wedge to go when I hit it, it's a little safer to hit it harder now without it pushing it back over the baseline. And I'm just going to keep deepening this because that also will form a positive stop for this cut, I hope, if I cross over it just a tiny bit to sever those fibers as well. I'm still going to be careful though because I'd really hate to force a split down into this area that would show. Now I'm just going to work my way back up this line, deepening it again with the flat side of the chisel into the keeper side of our work. Gently. And now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I just need to find a good way to remove this waste without splitting off this small piece or causing a split to continue down there. And one option is, of course, just to use our router plane and work our way down. But as I said, I'd rather use a chisel for the majority of the work so that I don't have to stop and sharpen the plane. And I can just peel it out. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to do this in cherry or oak or something harder, but in poplar, in pine, in linden, I can kind of do it by hand. I can't hog it out like I did when we were working across the grain, again, because I don't want to cause a split. So just make your way through, deepening the baselines. You can also break up the waist by making a series of hits across it, like so. that makes it easier to pop it out. With most of the waste removed, I'm ready to grab my router plane, but before I do that, I need to deepen the sides of the groove so that I'm at my full depth. Otherwise, I won't be able to pop the waste out easily. To do that, I'm just gonna grab a slightly bigger chisel just so I can make fewer hits. I'm going to be at 90 degrees against that wall. Now, because I've got the waste removed on this side of the chisel, the bevel's not causing me to push forward into the keeper side of the work. Also, there's a fairly deep trench now, so it really can't. So I can hit harder without worrying about it. I still need to worry about splitting back here, so I'm still being fairly gentle. 
Now I'm going to grab my router plane. Nah, I lied. I'm going to just take one more hit back down here at the end. I can hit harder going across the grain because this is actually severing the fibers. It's safer. My plane is still set from doing the dados, but if it weren't, I do need these this groove to be the same depth as my dados so I could reset it just by dropping it into the dado and setting it. Mm. There's still more waste in there than I thought. Not a big deal. The easy way to take care of that and to allow the router plane to work better is just to break it up with a series of hits. What I'm doing is just shortening the amount of waste that it needs to peel out each time. Really, it's just fun to hit things. So I'm down to depth. I just need to get back in here in the bottom of the groove with the chisel to remove the rest of that waste, and then we will repeat on the other side. So before I unclamp this, I'm just taking a quick look to make sure everything's square and it looked like I still had a little bit in the corner there. I can also grab a square, of course, a small one, and check it that way. And that reveals that I actually have a little bit of waste in here still to get rid of on this wall. I'm not getting all the way back to the bottom wall of the dado. I saw it or chiseled or something, just a slight angle there. Not a big deal. All better. But the real test is showing the board to its groove and seeing if it fits. So before we move to cut the other groove, I'm just going to show the board to its joint and make sure it fits. It's actually a teensy bit looser than I would like, but that's okay. Also, it's not seated fully at the bottom. I mean, it fits depth wise, but it's not hitting the bottom wall. And that means I just have a little tiny bit of waste in there to remove. A chisel will make quick work of that. So I'm ready to lay out the second groove on the other uh, side of the shelf. I already have this gauge set for the thickness of the rail plus the backboard. So I might as well just go ahead and mark that first so I don't have to reset things. Not first. First I'm going to mark the four inches down. I still have this set too, so yay. All right, because I need to know where to stop with this one. And now I can reset it just for the thickness of the backboard and mark the other wall. And then we're ready to saw and chop it out again, just like we did before. Maybe I'll use the router plane just to get down to depth this time so you can see how that works though. Why not? So I've got my layout done. I have my walls knifed in. I'm just going to take a little V cut again. We're going to deepen our baseline here, or actually make a baseline at the moment. It's just our pencil mark. Again, I'll just remind you that the flat side goes toward the keeper part. The beveled side goes toward the waist. Just a light hit to score it, basically. And then we'll come back and deepen it. Now, if I want to use the router plane more and the chisel less, I actually can't use the chisel less. I have to use the chisel more often. I have to stop and use the chisel in between using the router in order to deepen it out at the edges if I don't use a saw to cut away part of it at least. It's not necessarily faster. But I've mentioned a few times setting the depth stop and then working back down to it. So I just want to show you how that works. Because with some woods, you do have to do that, like oak for example. We've got our stop set here, so now I'm going to loosen this knob here, and then I can move the blade up, leaving this stop in its correct position for our final depth. So I can set this for a light cut, 
and just skim off the top of it, set it there, and then you can see how I will work my way down to our final depth. It's still helpful. Also, it's just kind of fun to do because it makes a cute little curl. It's still useful to break up the waste in here with a chisel, but it doesn't look as cool. So on the first one, I'm just doing it like this. I have to be careful and make sure I stop, which I did not, before I get to the bottom there. I went a little bit past it and lifted up the material. Not a big deal. You are likely to do that at least once in your woodworking career, so let me show you how I can fix that. First, I'll remove the rest of this waste down at the baseline for now. All I need to do is just lift that up a little bit. I don't want to break the fibers, just enough that I can get under it. And either with some dental floss or with a toothpick, I'll put some glue under there. We'll tape it in place and it'll be just fine. It'll, be, it'll fix itself as we move on. I'm using hide glue and I'll talk more about that later when we go to do our real glue up of the whole case. See if I can work a little bit under there. It cleans off with hot water now or in a hundred years. That's why I'm not really worried about getting it around the sides of it. And then I can just pop it back into place. I'm just going to tape that down and then we'll carry on. The reason that happened was because I had not sufficiently deepened the baseline. So I hadn't severed that material. The blade of the router plane lifted it right up. That's my fault. I was working too quickly. So don't do that. Now I can loosen the blade, drop it down, whoop, wrong one, a little, tighten it back down. Not going to lift up at the end this time. I deepened that sufficiently so it wouldn't happen. Now that the walls are pretty well established at the outside edges, I'm going to break up the material in the center with a bunch of cross cuts with my chisel and then I'll be able to zip out more waste without worry of splitting the sides of the walls. Having done that, I can take a bigger bite with the router plane. Give it a couple of turns this time. Hope that wasn't too many. Tighten it back down. Yeah. And we'll just keep doing that until we get down to our final depth. Ready to drop this into place. And unfortunately, it does just drop in. What that means is when I was scoring the baseline with the chisel and it probably pushed it across that bevel I was talking about. So it's a little looser than I'd like. Again, not a big deal. It's going to get nailed in place. Plus, I can just put a wedge back here and push this to the front so that you don't see any kind of an unsightly gap. So with this fit, we're ready to plane the exterior of the case, and then we'll be ready for assembly. With my sides planed up pretty much to where I want them, we're ready for assembly. I will almost certainly have to do a little bit of touch up on the sides afterwards because we're going to have clamps on it and my nicely planed surface. We'll have a few dents and dings, but we're not going to worry about that now. We're going to get everything together. Yeah, baby. Ooh, I'm out of focus. Why am I out of focus? Hey, focus. Well, <laughs> sometimes I guess that's going to happen. What is this deal? What is the deal, Logitech? All right. Well, you don't need to see me. Nobody cares. Uh, that was great. I love learning from Megan. She's the best. She just has a great way of explaining things and a great person to learn from. So if you are interested in this course, go to twwguild.com, look for the boarded bookcase 
build and you can take advantage of that pre-order price uh, because it goes up to full price tomorrow. Uh, a couple things. Uh, during the video, someone asked about how many videos there are in the series. There are seven total. One is a bonus video uh, at the end. I, I think it's making, is it the ship lap back or something? I forget what it is, but there's a, a little bonus. Uh, at the end, of course, you're going to get all the, the plans and the SketchUp model, all that fun stuff that goes with it. Uh, each video is eh, between like 25 and, and 40 minutes, some maybe even a little bit longer. They're lengthy. Um, so it's a, a substantial amount of content. Man, this camera being out of focus is really bugging me. Sorry. Picky about those things. Uh, so another thing I wanted to mention, a couple of people talked about the guild in general. Sometimes I forget to talk about these things. I forget to mention uh, what the guild is and how it works. So the, the Wood Whisperer Guild is a place where you can go get online courses. Uh, we've been doing it for a very long time, since 2008, I believe. And we offer courses from different instructors like Megan Fitzpatrick and a bunch of other names you probably recognize if you go there and check it out. All these courses are available for purchase. You simply, you know, you make the purchase, you get the plans, the videos, everything right away. We don't take anything away from you once you make that purchase. There's no subscription fee over time. You buy once, you own it. There are people who bought something 10 years ago and then they come back and can still log in and download those videos. So as long as you know, we, I don't plan on changing anything, but you never know with the way these things cost money to host files and stuff. So who knows what's going to happen in the future. But at least right now, you log in, anything you bought, it's always going to be there. We're never going to take access away from you. Um, there are also guild benefits like discounts. There's a private Facebook group, a private Discord server. We got a, a private forum right inside the website itself. And then, of course, we have our monthly guild meetings where I will do some demos or talk about something, you know, topical, uh, something specific. And uh, yeah, so once you own, once you buy the course, you own it, and then you get access to all the old guild meetings from years of, of uh, just tons of information in there. Uh, it's, it's quite intimidating when you, <laughs> when you look at it, honestly, there's a lot there. Uh, but we have some great instructors there. In fact, our editor and videographer Todd is filming with Caleb James right now. He's filming two projects with him and just had a call with them earlier. It's looking really good. So that's coming up uh, probably for 2024. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, you guys like these watch parties? I think maybe we can, we did this once before where we bring back some of the older courses and then we do watch parties with those. If you guys are into that, if you think that would be fun, let me know. Because I think it would be cool to just take some random course, pick a video, and then we just do one of these watch parties where hopefully my camera will be in focus next time. You know, I think that'll be good. So uh, stay tuned for more on that. Maybe we'll do like one a month or something. See how it goes. Oh, you lost audio? Oh, well, what do you, things, things are a little wacky right now. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully not everyone lost audio. But anyway, if you're interested in this course, is you think that's what it's doing on my mic mount? Here, how about this? Oh, you're right. Well, darn tootin', look at you. Okay. Oh, that's so much better. Uh, now that I'm ready to turn it off. Okay. So uh, yeah, twwguild.com. Megan Fitzpatrick is the uh, teacher, the instructor in this course. It's going to be fantastic, guys. She knows her stuff. Very beginner friendly, beginner focused, and clearly very hand tool focused. And we don't have a lot of those courses in the, the guild at this point. Uh, we basically have uh, Megan's previous project. We have a Chris Schwarz project. And now this second project from Megan um, as far as like a full hand tool focus. So I think you guys are going to dig it. So uh, yeah, head on in, check it out. And I guess, I don't know, what do we got going on? Anything tomorrow? I don't know. Follow me on Instagram. I got some fun stuff going on in the shop and I'll give you a, a real nice look at all the changes that we did in there if you want to keep up with that. Wacky, wild stuff. All right. Thanks, John. Thanks for the inspiration. Okay, you guys have a wonderful evening and uh, I hope to Black Friday sale videos. I don't know. Nicole, are we doing a Black Friday sale on videos? I know if I do a watch party for an old course, we'll put the course on sale for the watch party. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Actually, Nicole, there's three guild projects in the background. Barrister's Bookcase, Morris Chair, and uh, the, the Tilt Top Table is right over there. Surrounded by this stuff, you guys. We, we build furniture that's made to last, not stuff that just ends up in the, in the garbage, you know? Okay. Well, I don't have an answer for the Black Friday thing, Nicole, and I will have to talk about that. 
at the very least, we're going to have a day. I don't think we're going to do an extended thing, like a single day sale, something like that. Okay, have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining me for this wonderful evening with Megan Fitzpatrick. And uh, hope to see you tomorrow in the Guild.